What's up guys, you got Coach Kevin here and you got Liz, my wifey over here. All right guys, so we're gonna be explaining the one of the most common issues that a lot of people are dealing with. And guess what that is? Nope, it's not about hating burpees guys, it's about knee pain. A lot of people are always having knee pain. But the main thing with a lot of people, they always come to us, it's like, oh, I can't squat, my knees, this and that. The number one thing you have to first figure out is the root cause of that knee pain. If you had an injury, um, the way how you're walking, or is if you're overdoing it, or uh, just just general issues like that. Once you get that and you get assessed by a medical professional, and they're actually able to diagnose you with your root cause, you need to address that root cause. But I know everyone's in quarantine right now. I know probably no one's going to be attended or even be seen unless you got the COVID-19. Uh, but so what we're going to be doing, we're going to give you tips and tricks right now on how to deal with the knee pain. This doesn't mean that it's going to fix that pain. It means it's just going to address the issue and then, but you still should be getting checked out. All right. Okay. So we're going to use an example out here. Liz is going to be my demonstrator out here. So what most people do, we're going to start off with the typical squat. So what a typical squat, what it looks like out here from the side out view, what most people do is that when they squat down over here, they push back out over here. As you can see, their butt comes down way, way too low out here. And, and then once they try to rise up here, they end up pushing out their butt and then they raise up from here too. Another thing what a lot of people do is when they go, they send all the way down out over here, they end up pushing off of their heels. So the heels come off, applying a lot of pressure onto those knees and then they shoot up with their lower back first and then their back. So as you can see, once you see that body mechanics that you're placing a lot of pressure on your knees um, by coming off of your heels and then putting pressure on those knees and then putting pressure on more on your knees by leaning too, too forward, that's putting a lot of pressure on your knees, guys. So what do we have to do? So the main thing too is what we need to do with a squat is as you're squatting down, you need to take a deep breath in you gotta imagine like you're sitting into a chair. So I'm gonna be grabbing a chair out over here. So what we have a lot of our clients do is that I'm assuming everyone has a couch, everyone has a chair, even everyone has a table, you know what I mean? Or even a husband to maybe even pretend to be a table he could be sitting on. So what we're gonna be having to do is I'm gonna have Liz out over here. So she's gonna be sitting down into a chair. So as if she's sitting all the way back and come pushing all the way back up. So what I'm actually gonna have her do is that she's gonna sit down I'm gonna have her move her feet a little bit closer in front of her, a little bit closer in front of her. Now she's gonna sit up from here too, and up back from over here. So as you can see, so when she's sitting down, so this is a really, really good way to kind of assess how your squat is looking and how to practice your squat. So she's gonna go a little bit slower and sit all the way back down. So when she sits down, what she should, should be doing is that as you can see, her entire load, which is her entire body, her, her spine is nice and straight. As she's sitting up, she's gonna be pushing off with her whole foot standing straight up. She wants to make sure that she's not leaning too, too forward because when she leans too, too forward, that's gonna put a lot of pressure on her knees. So the main thing too is sitting into your heels. So that's the main thing. So always imagine when you're squatting that you're sitting into your heels, you're taking a deep breath in, and then as you're coming out, you're exhaling, okay? And then the same thing too, if you look down, you're gonna go down. So making sure that you are looking straight. When you squat down, again, one more time, Liz, as when you take a deep breath in, she's gonna be looking straight up and coming right back up, okay? So a good way, again, of how to practice is kind of doing a touch and go. As you try to get a little bit more advanced, you wanna pause at the pause at the bottom and making sure when you sit right back up, come right back up. And again, slowly but surely, I'm gonna be removing the chair and then she's gonna be practicing as far down as, you, as she's able to go without the chair. So this is a really, really good way and practice on how to kind of do it. Another issue a lot of people they've been having, especially with knee pain that we've noticed with a lot of our clients is lunges. I know lunges, people hate them, they love them, whatever it is too. We specifically seen a lot of people when they do their lunges, specifically with the forward lunge that they feel a lot of knee pain. So the typical way how most people do lunges is, so Liz is gonna be lunging forward. She's gonna take one foot forward as she's taking one foot forward, she's gonna place a lot of pressure. She's gonna be pushing onto a lot of pressure. A lot of people do that. I see a lot of people do this. They push a lot of pressure. So one more time, she's gonna be pausing there. She's gonna pause at the bottom. Pause at the bottom there. So number one, she's playing a lot of pressure out over here, okay? I'm the darker skinned person. She's a lighter skinned person, so people can. So she's, she's putting a lot of pressure on here. Number two is that she's raising off of her heel. That's already putting a lot of pressure on your knee joint right over here. And then when she tries to shoot back up, her hip's gonna shoot up first and then her back, so up, back, and forward. So over time, just imagine it's like a hammer that you keep hitting onto your joints. 
Initially, it's not going to hurt, but over time, if you keep repeatedly doing it all the time, it's going to be a wear and tear. So that's how people, they develop these bad habits that end up turning into chronic problems later on. So this is how the way that we're going to, we recommend all of our clients to start off as is grab a broom. I'm assuming everyone has a broom, right? So what we're going to be doing too is you're going to be placing one broom out here. And what we're going to do here is she's, if she's still going to go into a forward lunge, she's going to take one forward step out here and then forward out here and just descend straight down 90 degree angles chest is up from here the main thing too is here is what we have to see is that the knee on a forward lunge on a forward lunge is not passing her toes is not passing her toes this back leg out over here making sure it's not slamming down she's engaging her hamstrings and her glutes and she's pushing all the way straight up from here she's using this pole or this broom to help her push herself up it's okay to use assistance, guys. We want you to get the form down right. So form is always, always, always number one key because that's going to keep you with longevity on your joints, your health, and everything else. All right, guys. So another way to of doing is what we see a lot of people is when they go into reverse lunges. So reverse lunges is the same thing like a lunge, but the only thing is you're going into reverse. What most people do is when they go into reverse lunge, they go back and then they're very unstable once they go down. So they go down and they're very unstable to stand up. They apply still more pressure on the front leg and then they come right back up. So again, it's a very, very unstable. So the key thing here is what I noticed with a lot of people is, is it starts off in the bottom. It always starts off at the bottom and you got to work your way up. Always assess your client, always assess your form. So it always starts with the ankle. It might be a little bit of an ankle mobility. It might be the shoes, it might be might be something there too. Again, that's something that a medical professional should be assessing. But again, too, how we're going to be addressing that too. So how to do a reverse lunge. So Liz is going to be doing it again too. She's going to take a deep breath in. She's going to take one step back. Nice, a big, 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 deep step. And all she's just going to do is just descend straight down. Nice and slow. Pause as far down as you're able to go and come right back up. Again, we can use the broom as the same exact thing as that guidance as just kind of guiding us to go straight down, keeping that chest up. And we're going to be pushing down on that broom to making sure we stay in that upright position too. So again, so we're not leaning too, too far back. And as well, that broom is going to help us keep that stability throughout the entire movement because any single quick jolts over time is going to cause wear and tear. We're not saying if you do one lunge once, you're going to break your ankle or anything like that to you're going to tear your ACL or anything. But we're saying over time, guys. So this is what these are our tips that we're going to be giving out to everyone too. So how to squat and how to lunge, guys. These are the two main things that a lot of people, they see a lot of pain on because again, it's wear and tear over and over each and every single day. How are you feeling, Liz? She's feeling good, she's silent. Okay, yeah, she's feeling good. Okay, guys, so those are our tips and tricks for on how to deal with a squat, how to fix a broken squat, how to fix the knee pain initially, but again, too, a disclaimer, it is not fixing the root cause of it, it's just a quick adjustment to get you started with our virtual training, guys. Catch you guys later.